Is, is the strategy going to change at all now after this debate? I mean, right, President Biden today said that he's not as good as good a debater as he once was. He says he has a cold. So kind of which is it? And is, how is the strategy going to change going forward? Well, the strategy doesn't change at all. Our strategy, as I just said, moving forward is to relentlessly communicate directly with the American people between June 28th and November. We are going to, the president right now, what did he do after he got off the debate stage? He went straight to North Carolina to rally the troops here in the Tar Heel State, where the vice president is touching down in, out west in Nevada doing the exact same thing right now. We're going to relentlessly communicate across the airwaves, on the ground. We have 300 field offices that are opened up. We're going to relentlessly uh, work to reach the voters. They're going to decide the pathway to 270 electoral votes. Uh, we have the candidate that beat Donald Trump in 2020. We have the team that beat Donald Trump in 2020. Uh, and we are confident that if we keep our heads down and do the work, the American people are once again going to side with Joe Biden continues to be an issue for this campaign. So after last night, how, how could you not rethink some of the strategy here? Well, listen, age, uh, the president himself has said it's fair for the American people to consider age. But what's clear is that age is not going to be the contrast in this race. Joe Biden is 81 years old. Donald Trump is 78 years old. Joe Biden, every single day, is fighting for an economy that actually works for working people. That's fundamentally what they're going to vote on. They're going to vote about on the issues. They're going to vote for the candidate who is actually fighting for them. And it is very clear on all the issues that matter, from people's economic well-being to uh, which candidate is actually going to respect and restore a woman's fundamental right to make her own choices about her body, uh, to defending and protecting our democracy. The only candidate fighting for them is Joe Biden. Donald Trump clearly fighting for himself and fighting against the American people on all of those issues. That's what that's how the voters are going to fundamentally make their decision. Did you feel like the president performed differently in the debate prep? Did you see any kind of difference? Listen, the president himself said he you know, didn't have the best night. I think everybody understands that. And what you saw him to do today was to get right back up uh, and carry on the fight. That's exactly what people in North Carolina saw. That's what people across America are going to see. And that's what they're going to see in the days to come. This, this is a president who understands that he's never going to stop fighting for the American people. And that's what we'll continue to do. We're going to wrap it up. Watched the debate last night. A lot fewer will have seen the president's performance in North Carolina today. So, how do you make up for that gap of the people who just saw the image last night and did not see the rally that you guys are excited about today? Yeah, that's why you have a campaign to relentlessly communicate the president, his vision, his message. It's not just uh, the travel on the ground. It's not just on television. It's how we package and disseminate content. I would actually look at a lot of the work that we did with content creators, not just last night, but continuing to today. We're going to continue to, to uh, communicate relentlessly and use all channels of communication to make sure that people actually see the fighter in Joe Biden who got up on that stage today and will do so in the weeks to come. A rally, a rally is vastly different than a debate. So back to sort of the strategy angle, if they are going to have a second matchup in September, what is the actual strategic difference in preparation so that you have more of what happened today at the rally and less of what happened last night at the debate? Listen, we'll talk more about the second debate as we get closer to the second debate. What we're focused on right now in on June 28th is doing what we're doing today, getting back out on the stump, communicating directly with the voters that are going to decide the election in the battleground states. You have the president here in North Carolina, again, the vice president in Nevada, uh, on the ground talking with the voters in those states uh, that are going to decide this election. I think you saw how North Carolinians uh, responded to the president's message and his vision today in North Carolina. You're going to see the same thing out west, uh, where people get a chance to see Kamala Harris. And that's what our focus is going to be on, right? Directly engaging the voters, uh, making sure that all of our organizers we have over a thousand organizers across all the battleground states who are relentlessly doing the work on the ground. Our paid advertisements uh, continue to be aggressive. They continue to uh, to outpace the work that Donald Trump is doing, who's still uh, the vast majority of the money that his campaign is raising is still doing things like paying legal fees for somebody who's now a convicted felon. Right. I think it's in stark contrast, given the polarized electorate that we're in, given the fact that both of these candidates are so well known. The work that the candidates and the campaigns are doing to turn out and organize their voters matters that much more. And so that's what this campaign is going to be focused on as we head into the summer. Okay.